it sucks, but sometimes things just don't work out. Tom, don't go. You're still my best friend. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 saddest breakup scenes in movies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable scenes in movies where two people end their romantic relationship. Some of these couples might get back together later down the line, but that doesn't make these breakup scenes any easier to watch. I'm sorry you're hurt, but what did you expect? Number 10, Stephen and Elizabeth, Eat, Pray, Love. I don't want to go to Aruba. I don't want to be married. Elizabeth Gilbert has a great career, her own home to return to after a long day, and a loving hubby to spend her time with. Although she's essentially living the dream, Elizabeth still finds herself restless and unsatisfied as a whole. So she initiates a divorce from her husband, Stephen. Stephen does not take the news of this well exploding into a vicious rant about how he doesn't understand her decision, thinking that everything was going great between them. You never said, hey, you know what, you suck. I'm, uh, I'm deeply unhappy. You just took off. This scene teaches us that we can't always have what we want in love, and that sometimes we have to cause heartbreak in order to move forward. Uh, my client would like to submit a song that he wrote that he believes is relevant to these proceedings. It goes something like this. Are you kidding? <laughs> Quitter, 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 quitter. Number 9. Jacob and Anna, Like Crazy Why didn't you tell me that there was still something between you and her? Jacob and Anna are forced into a long-distance relationship after she's denied entry into the United States when her student visa expires. With an entire ocean between them, they both make a strong attempt to hang on to the passion that they once felt towards each other. But over time, their affection begins to fade. Both end up cheating on one another, and they unfortunately discover this over the span of one argument. Jacob, yes no? don't touch me! Did you me. sleep with him, yes or no? Did you? Jacob, don't. To witness how bitterly resentful and untrusting they've become towards each other is all the more heartbreaking when compared to how in love they once were. In this case, distance made the heart grow distracted, not fonder. I'd love to go back to That's my house. obviously where I'd you... love to go right now! Why are you me? shouting at me? Because I don't understand why you can say things like that! Number 8, Jerry and Dorothy, Jerry Maguire. I'm not a guy who runs. I stick. Well, I don't need you to stick. When sports agent Jerry Maguire decides to open his own office, 26-year-old single mother Dorothy offers to accompany him. The two grow romantically involved and even get married. But unfortunately, Jerry married Dorothy out of a fear of being alone, and she picks up on his uneasy vibes. Confronting Jerry before he heads off on his next road trip, she suggests that the best option for both of them would be to take a break, permanently. She claims that their personalities would eventually begin to clash in the long run, and that it was wrong of her to throw herself and her son at him in the first place. Jerry reluctantly agrees, hiding his unbelievable heartache. So this break is a break up. That's... Come on, Jerry. You know this isn't easy for me. Number 7, Isaac and Tracy, Manhattan. Tracy, you're throwing away an enormous amount of real affection on the wrong person. That's not wrong for me. Isaac Davis is under a lot of stress. He's dealing with finding a decent job opportunity, as well as the fact that his ex-wife is writing a book based on their divorce. His one solace from his frustrations is in the admirations with a young woman he's been dating named Tracy. Good things don't last forever, however, as Isaac feels it's necessary for him and Tracy to call it quits. Because I think you're getting too hung up on me, you know? She's completely enamored by him and can't understand his decision. But Isaac claims that she has her whole life ahead of her and that he isn't even sure what he wants. It might make sense for them to break up, but that doesn't make it hurt any less. Tracy, Tracy, don't, come on, don't cry, Tracy. Number 6, Ted and Joanna, Kramer versus Kramer. Joe, you're going to be real proud of me. I got good news. Ted. Yeah, one second. Let me just do this. Upon returning home, beaming with excitement to share great news concerning his career, Ted Kramer is met with an unexpected shock from his wife, Joanna. She very bluntly and clearly lets him know that she's had more than enough of their marriage before swiftly heading out the door. Ted, I'm leaving you. Ted, keys. Here are my keys. 
It all happens so fast that Ted can barely process what's happening, leaving him completely baffled by the whole situation. All he can do is desperately plead with her not to leave. Come on, just tell me what I did. That's all. Just tell me what I did that's so not terrible. You. It's not then you. what is it? It's me. It's my fault. Divorce is an ugly thing, and this scene perfectly captures the anxieties that surround the starting point of a separation. What am I doing? Number five, Will and Skyler, Goodwill Hunting. If you don't love me, you should just tell me I'm because it's such a love you. Goodwill Hunting is an emotional roller coaster all the way through. But the breakup between Will and Skyler brings the waterworks like nothing else in the film. After Skyler confronts Will about why he's so reserved when it comes to his personal life, as well as why he's unwilling to follow his dreams, things get heated very fast. You live in the safe little world where no one challenges you and you're scared shitless um, to do don't, anything don't, else because Don't that tell me about my world. Don't tell me about my world. Will lashes out at her for probing too deep into his affairs, revealing to her details about his troubled past that he wanted to keep hidden. No, that. you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that I got it. cigarettes put out of me when I was a little kid. By the time the screaming settles down, Skylar is left completely devastated when Will storms out of the room, telling her that he doesn't love her. Number four, Daniel and Miranda, Mrs. Doubtfire. That's great. She called you and you bust the birthday party. That's great. Don't you dare make me out to be the monster here, Daniel. Don't you dare. Daniel Hillard is a devoted and affectionate father to his three children. But his wife, Miranda, grows restless with his unreliable personality. One day, Daniel decides it would be a great idea to quit his job and throw a birthday party for their son, Chris. Since this was against Miranda's wishes, things take a turn for the worse and a wicked argument begins. Even when I try to do something fun, you have to do it ten times bigger! The scene really punches us in the gut when Daniel exclaims that they can still work it out because they still love each other. Miranda just turns to him and stares without uttering a word. It's the empty look in her eyes that signals to us that it truly is over. Come on, man. We love each other. Don't we? Number three, Ennis and Jack, Brokeback Mountain. Well, it's likely November before I can come out here again. The other relationships on this list came to an end based on a decision made by the couple themselves. But poor Jack and Ennis did not have the luxury of choice. The two men bonded a very deep level over the course of the film, sharing extremely intimate feelings for one another. We could have had a good life together, a real good life. Had us a place of our own. But you didn't want it, Ennis! The love they share is sadly a forbidden one, as homosexuality wasn't as widely acceptable during the time frame in which the movie takes place as it is today. I wish I knew how to quit you. Hiding their relationship from the world proves to be too much, and they decide to go their separate ways. But the breakup process proves to be incredibly difficult for both men to go through with. I feel awful bad about Jack. Number two, Noah and Allie, The Notebook. Are you breaking up with me? <laughs> this one hurts to watch. When Allie reveals to Noah that she wants to go away to study in the city, Noah is immediately heartbroken at the notion of her leaving. He sees nothing for himself in a city environment. And so, due to a serious difference in opinion, an argument begins. You're going away. You're leaving. Neither Noah nor Allie can deal with the reality of this situation as the heartbreak they both feel degenerates into a fit of yelling, shoving, and slapping. They say there is a fine line between love and hate, and Noah and Allie tiptoe dangerously close to that line in this sequence. Don't touch me! I hate you! I hate you! <laughs> Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. What brings me to Positano? Marcello, facciamo tardi. Un momento, tesoro. Arrivo. Arrivo subito. Do you want to marry me? Look, I... You see, you can never muster the strength to fight for me. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to that. Number one, Dean and Cindy, Lou Valentine. You can't be back here. 
Oh, it's okay. You're okay. I can't do this. I can't take this shit. Come on, Dean, come on. I cannot take this shit anymore. This film as a whole revolves around the love-hate relationship between Cindy and Dean, flashing back and forth through time to see all the highs and lows of their time together. Things hit rock bottom when a drunk Dean visits Cindy at the hospital, where she announces that she's had enough and lets him have it. I'm done being angry like this. I'm done having you drunk like this. I am done. Don't, 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 don't close that door. I'm closing the door. Don't Don't talk like that. You really feel the years of struggle explode into a mess of chaos as both members of the argument exchange insults, aggression, and generally unleash anything that's been boiling up inside. After Cindy violently hits Dean and storms out asking for a divorce, we know that any chance of love has died and are left feeling very blue for the characters on screen. Fucking want a divorce! If you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.